Hey folks, before this video starts, I'd just like to let you all know that this is my first attempt at doing an actual review and feedback would definitely be appreciated so I can improve these types of videos for the future. Also, give me some suggestions of different games that might not be well known that I could possibly review, either in the comment section or perhaps hit us up on Twitter or Discord. I may not take every suggestion, but each one will be taken into consideration. Thanks folks for understanding and enjoy the video. Pain is <gasps> I am Tracy. <laughs> Ever had those moments where you come across a specific game that looks really interesting, then you find out it was made by someone you knew fondly on the internet years ago? I've had some of those moments, and in this case, it's no different. Remember Newgrounds? This place used to be considered the shit back in the day. Home of many different flash animations, games, music, art, it was practically the hub of everything media related. Then, sadly, websites like YouTube and DeviantArt came along, and as the years went on, Newgrounds eventually fell into the world of obscurity. At the time when I used to explore the site, I came across hundreds of diverse content from so many talented people. Whether it was the bajillion different Mario bloopers or fan games I looked at non-stop, or epic shit like Territory Wars, SAS, and the dozens of different Madness games, back then, if you thought of something cool, it's bound to exist on Newgrounds. And on the subject of Mario, this is how I came to know the developer of Hardwood Queen's Rearm, Daniel Sun. More specifically, his Mario Flash animated series, Power Star, which back then I thought was not only the most epic, jaw-dropping, emotional, not to mention goriest Mario animations I had ever seen at the time. <laughs> I thought it was a masterpiece on so many levels. Almost a decade later, I still believe it. But of course, we're not here today just to talk about Mr. Sun as a content creator, but also as a game developer, to which he has quite a bit under his belt, including all five entries to the Armed with Wings series. I'll probably give these a look at some point in the future, but for now, we're looking at Armed with Wings Rearm, a remake to the first game built from the ground up and extended to provide a better experience. Because let's face it, 15 levels ain't gonna cut it, that's for sure. Also, because this is a remake, spoilers for the other two entries won't be present here. So, without further ado, let's go over the story, to which there's not really much of throughout the entire game, but I still feel it's necessary. And should you wish not to be spoiled, you can click at this point in the video to skip right past it. I'll give you five seconds. Our story starts off with, wait, the story's over already? And did I get the bad ending or something? Because this is quite depressing. Actually, this is indeed the start of the story, in which rebel forces from the kingdom of Black Mist have fallen to the hands of the evil tyrant King Vantyr. Despite all efforts to stop the new empire, our protagonist, creatively named the Lone Warrior, is the last standing member of the rebellion. Sword at hand and filled with determin- <clears throat> I mean filled with pride and competence, he attempts to strike at Vantyr, only to end up being pummeled to the ground. By the way, I don't care how thick or strong those gloves are, that shit's gotta hurt. The Lone Warrior claims that Van Heer's reign won't last forever before being sliced open and told a pun about his own fate. I'm not gonna take this villain seriously now, am I? Our protagonist awakes in what I can assume is the afterlife before coming face to face with these guys. I'm serious when I say that these guys just pop out of fucking nowhere, and the only thing I can assume is that they're gods of some kind that wish to offer the Lone Warrior power to stop King Van Heer. But even when our hero asks who these people are at the most appropriate time possible, they just completely ignore him, giving us no insight as to who these people are. Luckily though, it's not like we see them again as our hero awakes in Black Mist, where he 
Jack's faithful companion, Jock. Whoops, wrong bird. Actually, this bird isn't even given a name either, so for the sake of time and because I have nothing else better to write, let's just say fuck it and call him Jock. Please don't sue me, John Tron. Anyway, our hero progresses into the Black Mist, fighting off soldiers under Van Heer's lead, as well as monsters obstructing his progress, before eventually arriving at Van Heer's lair and coming face to face with him. Wow, that was fucking fast. Though I would expect much from a remake to a Flash game, which didn't have much story elements enough as it did, but still a little more is better than none, I suppose. After a long duel with Van Heer, the lone warrior is victorious, but all is not over yet, as Van Heer states that he will return one day to take back what was his. Ending off with a cliffhanger leading to what I can possibly assume will be armed with wings to rearm, but I'd rather not get ahead of myself. At least not yet. Hopefully. But yeah, that's pretty much the story, which again, isn't as big as what most people would expect, but that's to be expected for a game like this, especially with it being made by one guy. And as a game made by one guy, whoo! The rest definitely makes up for it, so what's there to expect? Well then, let's take a look. Before we get started though, I'd like to clarify that I'm going to be going over this game being played with a controller, Steam controller to be more precise, which I should stress is the best way of playing. Xbox, PlayStation, customized USB controllers, or hell, even the Steam controller itself is a good option. Not that using a keyboard isn't preferred, even though ironically it gives you the authentic Flash experience like the originals did, but games like these, to me, don't sit well when using a keyboard. Hey, I may have played lots of fan games and Flash games using nothing but these clicking motherfuckers back when I was a kid, but my hands are big, and the last thing I want is to get hand cramps for days. So, how exactly can I describe a game like Armed with Wings Rearmed without being cliché and dated? Nah, fuck it, let's be cliche and dated because it's better get straight to the point now, isn't it? Armed with Wings Rearmed is a 2D action hack and slash game in which you control the lone warrior through 40 levels, each one of them being filled to the brim with soldiers, monsters, bosses of many shapes and sizes, puzzles, weapons, orbs, and lots and lots of secrets. At the start of the game, your gear will be rather limited, starting off with nothing but a simple katana. However, within the first few levels of the game, the katana is a good way of helping you get used to the controls, which are casual for games like these. The A button allows you to do a standard slash attack, while the B button allows you to do a stronger attack. By pressing the buttons in different orders, you can perform different combos to dish out lots of pain on your foes. Not just with the buttons, but also with the joystick as well, allowing you to do moves like uppercuts and downward thrust to the enemies below you. By pressing the right trigger button, you can block attacks from enemies, and when holding the buttons while simultaneously moving the joystick left and right, you can dodge attacks of any variety. Don't use this move too often though, as it will more than likely get you hit once you land on the ground. Personally, I use this move more often when I have the regenerative ability at my disposal, so that way when I'm fighting a boss or a large group of enemies, I have a much better chance at gaining more hits on him while not risking myself dying, although there are these cleverly placed orbs around the levels that can heal you for a little for each one. Finally, there's the charge attack, which can be done by holding down and the B button. Once the charge has been complete, you can strike a lightning-powered blow on your enemies. This technique can also be used to destroy certain walls that either hinder your progress or hide secrets. Up next are abilities, or boosters as they're more commonly known. Abilities can be acquired throughout the different weapons you find or unlock the more you play the game. These abilities can range from regenerating health to better attack power, or could be an ability in terms of combat, like throwing projectiles, a sweet special attack that throws all enemies in the area up high, followed by the lone warriors slashing at them one at a time quickly, to even the simple ability of jumping. Would you think that you would have to unlock the ability to jump or perhaps find a fucking sword that has it? I mean, to be fair, there's not much platforming in this game per se, thank fuck. But for most 2D games, whether they're platformers or not, I'm usually used to the idea of jumping. It's just a tiny nitpick, but still, something I can't quite put my finger away from. Ah well. As for other weapons, you can find them every once in a while after defeating enemies, each one having different stats for attack, speed, health, and defense. However, if it's a weapon you haven't unlocked yet, you can't change back to it if you happen to replace it with another. To unlock weapons, you have to gain score the more you play through the game in either story mode or even survival mode, something we'll get onto a little later. The more score you gain from the moment you start with a fresh new 3 lives to the moment you lose them all, you'll eventually unlock these weapons, alongside some of the abilities I mentioned beforehand, which you can equip on specific weapons. If it all seems too complicated, trust me it isn't. It's easy to get into and understand. Now, of course, combat isn't just the name of the game here, as you are, indeed, armed with wings. With the help of your winged friend Jock, you can solve many different puzzles to progress through the levels, such as carrying specific objects to different endpoints, to even flying through mazes to a spot that can somehow teleport you to his position. Uh, neat? You can also move faster by pressing the B button, but that takes away energy from your flight mirror, to which if it runs out, Jock will fly back to you, forcing you to start the puzzle all over again, or at least continue where you left off. 
This can be prevented on some levels, which has a special power-up specifically made for him, allowing him to fly infinitely for the rest of the level. As for the levels themselves, again, there's 40 to the game, sometimes having a lot of variety in terms of combat and puzzle solving, and some literally being just filler from one area to another. Seriously, why are these things here? Now, for most games like these, levels usually go from point A to point B, but I was surprised to discover that for some of these levels, it's not the case. Aside from the more casual routes that you may find yourself coming across, there's also some alternative routes leading to different end goals that you may end up either fighting at the corner of your eye, or perhaps by complete accident. During my first playthrough of this game on JCG, I came across lots of alternative pathways by complete fucking accident, but it's ultimately what encouraged me to explore these levels, and if there's one thing I love doing in games, it's exploring to find goodies and secrets, and man oh man, there are lots of them! For instance, there's these little relics flying around all the levels. I'm not entirely sure what their overall purpose is in the game, but I suppose I should find the rest of them to find out for myself. There's also these campfires lying around that you can use to change which weapon you want to use as well as their abilities, though most of them you'll come across before fighting one of the three boss encounters. The first boss you'll fight against is this giant sword welding motherfucker that loves to spin around on rare occasions, which if you're not careful enough you may end up flying into the spike to the left- OH GOD DAMN IT! Come on, you fucking bastard, you! Mm. The second boss is this weird dinosaur-like monster that likes to roll in a ball, which oddly reminds me of Sonic, and I can't believe I'm making the kind of reference for a game like this. This one's definitely hard when you go up against it on your first run, so memorize his attacks and do your goddamn best. And the last boss is the encounter with Van Deer himself, which has two forms. The first one is piss easy to beat, and all he does is shoot fireballs at you which are very easily avoidable, this wave attack which as long as you think fast you should be able to dodge, as well as punching and kicking like an asshole. WHAT AN ASSHOLE! Now the second part is where the real fight begins, sword to sword based combat and goddamn this motherfucker means business! This is the part I was talking about where I used the dodge ability a lot while having the regenerative ability, but even when I kept on doing it, this guy kept on kicking my ass, resulting in the optional cutscene in which the lone warrior gains more power to defeat Vandir playing more times than necessary. But I was stubborn as fuck, and during my last attempt I used the same abilities as usual, attacked when he was most vulnerable and using stronger attacks when given the opportunity, and jumping around to avoid some of his stronger attacks during his second phase. And when I struck him the last time without taking the alternate cutscene route, it felt so damn good. Hands were sweaty, muscles were tightened, I had quite the headache, but I didn't care. It felt like that was a final boss worth fighting, and goddamn, it was fucking epic. And the reward for doing so was even better. You can actually play as Vand here. He's got his fire attack from the first phase, and also has the ability to shoot ice shards and enemies from the second phase. He's also pretty strong as fuck, and as of such can make some levels pretty damn easy. That kinda makes me wonder, why isn't Vandir given a harder difficulty and not the Lone Warrior? You'd think that'd make it easier for newcomers, but hey, I suppose that's not much of a big deal. I don't really see myself playing as banned here on the story mode as a whole unless I want to find those hidden secrets without much of a hindrance. Now I can definitely see myself using this character in something like survival mode, an endless wave based mode in which you fight off enemies of different varieties in five different styles. God's Dagger is a simple way to get you started with the mode with a little bit of difficulty strapped onto it. The slope has you surviving enemies all the while keeping yourself on the mountain slope while the wind kicks in on certain rounds. Boss survival speaks enough for itself, every wave you have to survive a boss alongside some regular enemies. Also, I'm not sure if it's just me, but I came across a weird glitch in this mode in which the dinosaur boss bugged out, spinning endlessly and not able to take damage. And this soldier here strangely joined in on the fun. This calls for some fitting music. <laughs> Holy Grounds is pretty much easy mode if you're just getting started with the game and need to get used to the combat mechanics. Last but not least is Rearm Trials, in which you start out with nothing but a katana with different weapons spawning the more you fight. This one's my personal favorite because it really increases variety on survival. Best thing about this one is that there's actually a demo of this on Mr. Sun's Newground page that you can give a try if you're interested in getting the full game. Overall, it's a nice little distraction should you be interested in kicking ass with honor. The only other thing I could talk about is the Versus mode, which has different submodes like Survival, however because I don't have another player to play with, that's kind of off the charts. But anyways, Armed with Wings Rearmed is definitely a fantastic game. For a remake built from the ground up, this definitely has a lot of really good things going for it. The level design is great for those who like to explore, the combat is good especially with the different weapons you can unlock, the story, while not much of it, definitely has some good moments, especially with how much effort was put into the animation. Speaking of which, look at these damn visuals. It's clear that Mr. Sun really wanted to make a world feel so alive, but also so dreaded. My god, it works. I'm usually into the more colorful games out there, but when black and white is done right, it's done fucking right. 
although there are other filters should you wish to use them. And did I mention how awesome the soundtrack is? It may not seem like much, but this is definitely reflecting on an era that not much of us see anymore. It makes it feel like this game was a Flash game given a retail release, an effect I could wholeheartedly give a thumbs up for. I definitely recommend this game to anybody who's interested in the action games, hack and slash games, hell, perhaps quality Flash games in general. If you're interested in giving this game a go, I'll have a link in the description below to the Steam page, but if you're uncertain about it, I recommend giving all five entries of Arm Wolf a shot as well, including the Rearm Trials, which I'll put their links in the description too. With that said, I'm going to give this game an 8.5 out of 10. Great action, great gameplay, great visuals and music, Mr. Sun went all out on this as much as he could, and as of such, the outcome is stupendous. Definitely give it a go. Thanks folks for watching the video. If you are charged with joy, please be sure to give it a like or an upvote if you're on VidMe. Also be sure to put any suggestions you have in the comment section on any games I could look at in the future. Be sure to share this video with your friends on social media as well, and if you want to be even more charged with joy, be sure to click that subscribe or follow button. Till then folks, this has been Brian of Joy Charge Gamers with another episode of Unearthed Obscurities, and I'll see you all next time. Farewell!